Uh, do you have an example of how the energy misbehavior in a board caused the board not to function well? Do you have any kind of thoughts or examples on that? If not, that's fine, but I thought I might as well ask. And see. Well, every, every time there's an EMC failure, there's, you know, it's because they failed to control the, the electromagnetic energy properly. And one of the most common ones have to do with power supply designs. Almost all of the radiated emissions issues that I've worked on are because of there is a, a, an improper understanding of, of delivery of energy to the ICs. And we were taught in, the, in the, before that if you have any types of radiant emissions problems, it's the output, the switching event that causes the problem. And what I've discovered is it's not the switching event, it's the, the opposite event. This is when you turn on a switch and the energy moves into that pipe, there's never a, a continuous impedance. So it's like you have two different size hoses and you have a big hose and a little hose. When the big hose turns on, the, the little hose drops pressure and that's the reduction of voltage. So you get a, a drop in voltage that's the same frequency, same edge as the output. So if it's a nanosecond switch, if you get a nanosecond, I call a depletion wave going upstream looking for the uh, source of energy. And if you don't have the right amount of energy at the right place on the board, then this nanosecond event is, can find a quarter wavelength and find its way to then radiate. And most commonly is they will not have followed the one dielectric rule because they don't think power is important clocks are important, that they will separate power from ground, and that causes a discontinuity that will allow sometimes the energy, to, the depletion energy, that wave, because it's creating a magnetic field too, and that magnetic field that's relative to the changing voltage is what causes a changing voltage that then finds its way into space, and that happens everywhere.